Welcome back, everybody, to the Omega Metroid Podcast. It is episode 76, and I am Dak, joined alongside again by my man, Duminal. How you doing, man? It's great to have you back. Doing pretty good. You know, just uh, started college uh, my fourth year just uh, just yesterday. So, Or actually, no. Yeah, yeah, yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm still getting my days mixed up. I keep forgetting today's Tuesday and not Monday, you know? <laughs> you know how it is. Is today Tuesday? I thought today, uh, dude, I thought today was Wednesday, and I realized, no, the episode will be out on Wednesday, which will be today when everyone's listening to it, but it's actually Tuesday when we're recording, so I'm all mixed up, too, and congratulations, man. I, uh, that, that's a pretty big accomplishment, and I'm close to wrapping that up, and yeah, that's pretty awesome, so congratulations, dude. Yeah, very excited, very happy to be back in uh, Monterey, too. You know, I've been in Sacramento for about a year, and you know, no hate to Sacramento, you know, I like my hometown, but Monterey is definitely where I belong. Love the weather, love the beaches, love everyone here, and yeah, great to be back in Monterey, and it's great to be back once again on Omega Metroid. It's great to have you back. I've never been to Monterey, but I have been to the Omega Metroid podcast, where today we are going to be talking about some, some more Metroid not some Metroid Dread, even though the start of, I mean, the the start window of, like, the launch window, right? Like, we're getting closer and closer to that time when even more of the advertising is going to start ramping up, I'm sure. I think we're actually getting a gameplay trailer in the next few days. And yeah, I'm August 27th. The launch of, yeah, August 27th, right? So that's that's Friday, yeah. So this Friday, we're getting more gameplay, which is really hype. I know a lot of people are, like, avoiding it now because we've actually seen a good amount of like the beginning of the game so it's me i'm people <laughs> yeah i was gonna say you're one of those people but yeah the the launch of metroid dread is imminent it's coming very soon and i'm very excited we're all very excited but today we're going to be talking about all the other metroid games because we're talking about some metroid music specifically we're going to be talking about the metroid soundtracks right like every ost for all the different metroid games we're going to be ranking them and we're going to go, you know, into our notes on what we feel about each and every game's soundtrack and what they, what we feel about them, where they rank in comparison to the other games, and so on and so forth. So I'm going to be outclassed here because uh, you're the expert on music, dude. <laughs> and I, I know that I'm just going to be like, yeah, like, this is this is really good, and I really like this. And you you know all the technical stuff, and you're going to be able to go into much more detail. So I'm excited to hear what you think about all these different games. Yeah, you know, this this is definitely, like, uh, my wheelhouse. I uh, I don't want to flex my credentials too much. I am just a college student, but, like, music is definitely one of my biggest passions and what I am majoring in. So, you know, and Metroid, you know, it's a very big reason that led to, uh, that led to this uh, potential career path in the first place because I was always so fascinated with this music as a, as a kid, and I'm sure you were too. So even if you don't have that technical know-how, I'm sure that you're going to be able to, you know, to relate to this on a similar level. And I'm really excited to hear uh, your thoughts on it as well. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing is this was actually, I would, in my opinion, one of the hardest episodes that I prepared for for this show because I personally have a really, like, I'm really indecisive as a person. So, like, it's hard for me to, like, rank these soundtracks against each other. I think, like, almost every Metroid game sounds really good. It has a lot of great music in it. So, like, it was hard to be like, oh, is this better than this? And I was going back and reliving and re-listening to all of it. I'm like, wow, every Metroid game sounds awesome. Like, it's one of the most consistent parts of the franchise, for sure. And, of course, it's one of the reasons why it's one of the most critically acclaimed series out there. So, yeah, this was something that, like, I really had to think, like, hard about on some of these games. Because I was like, hmm, like, do I really like this more than the previous one I just listened to? Like, some of these tracks are, like are so good and then i was able to go back to some tracks i hadn't heard in so long that really changed my feelings on the soundtrack overall so uh yeah we'll see how it all matches up so the the idea here is we're going to go through each metroid game in order of game release so starting from the nes metroid all the way to metroid samus returns uh we're not going to talk about metroid dread just because we're likely going to do an entire episode just solely on the music of Metroid Dread, so we're going to save that for that episode, and honestly, we really haven't, like, gotten a good... I mean, we have heard the music in the trailers and some of the gameplay, but I think, like, once we actually have the game, we'll be able to more <laughs> accurately judge or at least <laughs> experience the, the, the soundtrack, the official soundtrack of Metroid Dread, so I think we're going to wait till then, or at least around till that time, around launch time, to do this, that kind of episode, so we'll save it for later. 
Um, and we will even touch like a little bit on like Metroid Prime, like pinball, which <laughs> is it might not be exactly the soundtrack you're thinking of when you're thinking of most memorable Metroid soundtracks. But nonetheless, we'll go through all of them in chronological order. Well, at least in release order. Sorry, not chronological order. Uh, we'll go through it in game release order, and then we'll also rank them at the end and see how our rankings stack up. So, Dumino, you ready to get into this one? I'm I'm all ready. Let's uh, let's go into the Morphal tunnels of the uh, musical highway. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> let's let's do it, man. Let's, I'm down for some Metroid highways. I think Metroid doesn't have enough of them. Though we will start with the very first Metroid game for the NES, 1986. And I want you to start off with this. I'm putting you on the spot because I feel like you'll be able to perfectly state how what I feel like about this the soundtrack. So I'm going to only add to it. But what are your thoughts on the NES soundtrack? And I feel like you got to also frame it both as like how you, how it feels listening to it in 2021, but also what the soundtrack is for like its time, like when it was released. Yeah, of course. I, I feel like I'm going to be doing this a lot. <laughs> yeah, of course. But uh. But yeah, so Metroid, uh, 1986 Japan, 1987 uh, North America, and this was done by Hirokazu Hip Tanaka. Uh, we generally call him Hip Tanaka for short. And uh, you really, when you're talking about NES Metroid, there really is two soundtracks if you think about it, because you have the original soundtrack on the Famicom Disk System in Japan, which has a much more advanced chipset to be able to do more detailed sounds and stuff like that. And then you have the North America and European versions, or pretty much all the other territories outside of Japan, really. And the soundtrack was redone to accommodate that NES hardware. And I really like both versions a lot. But um, to go with the theme of this soundtrack specifically and where it stood at the time, because this really did break the mold from what was expected. And this was, um, this was Hip Tanaka's original intention. I actually have a quote up here from an interview that he did in Game Sutra in 2002. Uh, weirdly enough, the same year uh, Prime Infusion came out. But regarding his philosophy on what on what he wanted to do with the Metroid soundtrack, he says, quote, I had a concept that the music for Metroid should be created not as game music, but as music the players feel as if they were encountering a living creature. I wanted to create the sound without any distinctions between music and sound effects. And that quote really resonates with me, not just with Metroid, but I feel like that is a fantastic template that is carried on throughout the series as we're going to go and talk about as we get to each individual game. But in, but that philosophy is reinterpreted by all these composers in its own unique way. And Tanaka-san is the first one that really set that precedent. And it was something that gamers had never really seen before at that time. And does it fully live up to, does it fully live up to that to that mantra i don't think so like there's some good themes like brinstar for example but i wouldn't classify brinstar exactly as something that sounds like a living creature but i do think that there are other tracks that really do come close specifically the item room theme which the nes version of the item room theme is my favorite in the whole series because it has the most atmospheric and moody composition out of all of them it, and it sounds really creepy the uh the mother brain and torian themes where you actually can like it feels like the background is actually contributing as instruments to the track itself, stuff like that. Or, um, yeah. And, and even, and again, even, even the tracks that don't adhere to that philosophy, like Kraid's theme, even NES Kraid's theme, like obviously we've heard a bunch of those themes, you know, we'll talk about Zero Mission later. There's of course the Smash arrangements, but even that original NES Kraid theme is such a bop. Absolutely love it. Well, first off, dude, I, thanks for the, the history lesson because I didn't even know a lot of that. But um, yeah, I think that like that took so much of what I was going to say, right? Like that was I think that quote perfectly feels like that's exactly how I feel about this soundtrack because I was listening to this soundtrack for the NES Metroid in comparison to like Kid Icarus, which is a game that like the original Metroid and the original Kid Icarus got compared pretty frequently and they're pretty similar and share a lot of ele elements as a game. Um, when you listen to like the Kid Icarus soundtrack, it does feel very gamey, like it's pushing you to the end of the level, and it has that kind of energy, whereas the Metroid soundtrack for the NES doesn't really feel like it's pushing you to the end of the level. It doesn't have that same gamey feel, so I agree with the first half of that philosophy, not so much the second, like you said, you know, like, I, you know, I don't know if it necessarily feels like it's an organic thing, but it does feel like more natural and... 
I wouldn't say realistic, but it feels more organic in terms of like, you're right. It's more of the part of the environment rather than, okay, I'm playing a video game and it's trying to like hype me up to get to the end of the level and all that, which a lot of those, you know, that era of games certainly sounded like, but even games that were comparable to Metroid like Kid Icarus sounded like too. So I like that there was that kind of dichotomy there. And you're right, like the different kinds of tracks you mentioned, Torian. I love that one because it sounds like you're getting like haunted by a like the Boo Ghosts in uh, the Mario Kart 64. Um, oh yeah, that, yeah. You know, <laughs> it sounds just like that. And then oh man, it, I can't get that out of my head now. What have you done? <laughs> yeah, it sounds just like the Boos. And but that's like sounds so different from like the Kraid theme, like which has like specific like riffs and memorable like beats in the track to like Norfair, which is very minimalist. It has like the pauses in the track and so I, I love that even despite the limitations of the time all the different themes and whatnot still felt very different from one another for the most part of course you could still tell like they were obviously limited by the hardware but with the with what they had i think they did a lot so i think it stands i think it stands up pretty well to the test of time like all things considered it's obviously not gonna it's no triple a like studio in the 2010s kind of soundtrack but i don't think necessarily that makes it better than something that came out in 85 by the way i know i said the wrong year earlier um <laughs> and yeah I, I think for the nes this soundtrack really stands like ahead of so many other games so um i, I really like going back to this one because it doesn't have that like arcade game kind of feel it felt like a real adventure in a real alien world you know, it's actually funny that you brought up uh, Kid Icarus earlier, as that is another soundtrack that uh, Hip Tanaka composed as well. So a really uh, really apt, apt comparison there. Well, there you go. So he, I feel like that's that's a good thing to note, too, because you can tell like he obviously knew the difference in, of like what kind of game he was developing soundtracks for, right? Like, I'm not sure if going the Metroid style would have worked for like that original Kid Icarus game, or maybe it would have. I'm not sure. Um, either way... Moving on to the second game. I'm not sure if you... We'll, we'll rank it later. I do have scores for each, but I'll save it for later. Um, mm -hmm. Metroid 2, Return of Samus for the Game Boy. Uh, this one, I actually think it's still pretty impressive how they they managed to do a good amount with like the hardware, which is also the same thing I feel about NES Metroid, but like especially with the Game Boy. Uh but that said, I think the soundtrack is kind of weak outside of a few tracks like Surface of SR388, and it kind of gets pretty weak over time. But I, I feel like I can't knock it too hard because it's like a Game Boy game from the 90s. It, I do think it is the weakest soundtrack of all the Metroid games, though. What do you think? Really? Uh, yes. No, I big, yes. big <laughs> disagree. Huge yes. disagree. No, so uh, so Metroid uh, 2 Return of Samus was done by uh, Ryoji Yoshitomi. He actually does a lot of the WarioWare games nowadays, weir weirdly enough. But but yeah, this is the only Metroid game he did at the time. And once again, this continues Hip Tanaka's philosophy of kind of blending the music and the environment together. And there's really two ways to look at this soundtrack. And I, and I think you're looking at the soundtrack as just a standalone experience, as in... Um, you know, I downloaded the files online, I'm popping in my headphones, I'm just enjoying the music. And to that I agree, you know, most of the tracks are more just environmental stuff, ambiance stuff, but there are a few bangers in there. Of course, Surface of SR388 I think is a top 10 theme. By, by the way, for those of you who watched the Metroid 2 episode of me and Andy, I'm basically just going to be repeating everything I said there, so just an <laughs> FYI, because we, we talked a, a lot about the music in that episode, but... Yeah, um, as a as a game mechanic though, the music I think I think that this goes even a step further than Hip, to Hip Tanaka's original philosophy. You know, with the Metroid caverns and the bleeps and bloops, um, in the Queen Metroid theme, you can, or uh, or not even in the Queen Metroid theme, in the uh, in her lair, you can actually hear the walls rumbling like in tandem with the music. That is that at least for me, I represent it as like her in the background, which stuff like that I just think is so cool. And there's so many little details of that present in the Metroid 2 soundtrack. But but yeah, in terms, um, it sacrifices. Uh, it's sac yeah, it it does all that, but it sacrifices the melody to get that effect. And as a result of that, you know, you don't have that standalone listening experience with a you know with a few exceptions like you know the main tunnel the ending credits the last metroid theme etc cetera, etc cetera. 
I, I definitely see what you're saying. Like, of course, yeah, I went and listened to it on YouTube, you know. But, I, I mean, I still think even from a gameplay perspective, it, it kind of makes the game feel a little bit hollow. Like, when like, you mentioned the Metroid Queen theme, which I think is one of the better themes in the game. Like, yeah, like that kind of like vibration effect, like the kind of like rumbling a little bit totally works. But then like the cavern themes, that feels like too gamey to me when I hear like the bleeps and the bloops and there's nothing else happening. It totally reminds me that I'm like playing a video game, which obviously I'm not like so immersed. I wouldn't be aware of that otherwise, but it kind of, it doesn't like Metroid NES, like, do, never felt like it had that many gamey, uh, like so significantly lacking in kind of like a melody <laughs> to me. I don't know. I just it, even going back like gameplay wise, I definitely see what you're saying. It feels more integrated into the the environment and the world itself. But I think that comes at a cost because at, at times it feels like there's nothing happening at all. And I don't know if like the complete lack of music at times just doesn't work for me. Uh, but I, and I also just, there aren't a lot of like memorable themes from it other than like surface of SR three, eight, eight, like the Metroid queen boss theme is still pretty good. Hatchling theme, pretty good, but I, I don't know. I, it, one thing that stands out to me for, for like most Metroid OSTs is that they're pretty consistent. And this one I didn't feel was consistent at all. There were tracks that I liked and even like watching them with gameplay, I still felt like, ugh, like this feels kind of empty compared to other Metroid games. So, but again, like that, that comes with the hardware and the time it came out. I still think though I would rank it the lowest. That's just me. Yeah, I, I'm honestly like I, I felt I felt like you you wouldn't appreciate it um to that degree, but I'm I'm actually surprised you're ranking it the lowest. That definitely surprised me. I I for some reason though I feel like we're gonna agree on most of the other ones though. But yeah, I have too. some surprises in here for sure. Um. And that's not the first one, but we'll, we'll see. I, I think this next one is not going to be much of a surprise because we're talking about Super Metroid for the Super Nintendo. This is a very goaded soundtrack. This is, I think, pretty much like a fundamental, like structural soundtrack for like the rest of the series. It has influenced so many other games. So many of its tracks have been translated to other Metroid games. And it being like on the Super Nintendo where it could take advantage of that, that hardware compared to the NES... And still, you know, not being on a portable system like the Game Boy with Metroid 2, they really kind of flexed with that. Like, you can see much more of a mix of, like, both, like, electronic, like, synthy sounds and more instrumental kind of sounds and, and whatnot. Like, specific themes that became, like, characteristic and, like, identifying for the Metroid series. So, yeah, this is one of the best OSTs in the series. I, I love, like, the, the added usage of, like, horns and criteria. There's, like, the woodwind kind of sounds and meridia. I love, like, the louder drums that you get in the background. Those, like, thumping kind of beats that become characteristic in other games, like in Metroid Primes. So, yeah, Super Metroid, really awesome. I feel like you would agree on that. <laughs> yeah, so Super Metroid, yeah, obviously, like, you know, one of the greatest um, SNES soundtracks of all time, in my opinion. Uh, absolutely incredible work for the time, and it still holds up today. It's just such such a bop to listen to from start to finish. And a huge precedent in this, uh, this is the first appearance, because Super Metroid was done by Kenji Yamamoto and Minako Hamano, who are... Uh, Ken Yamamoto-san in, in particular, uh, you're going to see him pop up on a lot of these soundtracks going forward. And uh, I'm, I'm hoping he's doing Dread as well, but we don't know exactly who's composing that. But yeah, Kenji Yamamoto and Minako Hamano, probably the two um, most sought-after Metroid composers. They have they they have the most Metroid games on their resume, and I think after seeing their work with Super Metroid, it's no question why. Um, you know, uh, the harmonies and the melodic work they do is absolutely incredible. And this game has one of my favorite Metroid songs of all time, being uh, uh, the Return to Criteria theme. I believe it's. Uh, uh, theme of Samus Aran, Galactic Warrior, and it has never appeared in another game, and that makes me very sad, because I absolutely love this theme. Um, I love the uh, the timpanis and the percussion for the for this track in particular. It's like this uplifting marching track um, that gives like this weird sense of hope in a Metroid game, but it feels it feels so fitting because it's the first time Samus is returning to the surface again, and it just uh, it just it really the first time I heard that it just really spoke to me on that level. And I feel like 
kind of going off topic for for a bit i kind of i kind of hope they put this in dread when samus returns to her ship because obviously that's what samus is trying to do throughout dread is go back to her ship i feel like that would be a wonderful callback but that's not we're not here to talk about dread so i'll let you <laughs> go on and give your thoughts on uh super metroid yeah i mean well i'm curious what you think actually would you say that super metroid is the the best metroid ost I'm gonna add like, or should you not spoil your ranking? Just you, yet? We'll we'll wait for the <laughs> rankings before, well, before um we see yeah. where Super Metroid yeah. is. But uh, but you know it's it shouldn't be come as too surprise. It's it's pretty high up there. It's pretty high up there. Yeah, it's it's definitely high up there for me too, and I think probably for everybody, it's certainly up there for me. But I would say the next game is. It might it might be my top pick. I'm, I'm I'm I don't know if I'm spoiling it just yet, but Metroid Prime for the GameCube, man. I think this is the the goatiest of the goat Metroid OSTs. What are, what are your thoughts after Super Metroid? You know the game series goes on hiatus. Everyone's not sure about this game transitioning into you know 3D gameplay. They come out with this soundtrack, but I I gotta say I feel like Metroid Prime has so many of like the series is like like so many iconic like comparable to super metroid so, like as many as iconic tracks as that game has i think i i love metroid prime's ost i love it's like range it translates like classic metroid music like lower brin star and trans and, and then like brings in so many uh like its own unique original tracks that have really stuck with not only like the franchise but with fans you know, tracks like Fendrana Drifts, but then even, like, you get, like, the, the range of, like, getting, like, the groovy tracks, like Fendrana Drifts Depths and Talon Overworld Depths, and you get the tents and, and, like, tracks for the Chozo Ghost and Space Pirate themes. The boss themes are so good. It has, like, my favorite Ridley theme uh, arrangement. Uh, yeah, I, I absolutely... Even, like, the title theme is iconic, and I think it's probably the most iconic Metroid, like, theme outside of just, like, the, the standard you know <laughs> fanfare right uh yeah metroid prime soundtrack i is so good one of the probably one of the best soundtracks of and not only the series but probably of all of games ever in my opinion yeah metroid prime is absolutely incredible and should come as no surprise as uh once again this is done by kenji amamoto as well as some uh, help from his assistant at the time uh, koichi koyuma and uh, for those in the Discord, you actually know that I did a college research paper in 2017 specifically on the Metroid Prime soundtrack, specifically on this concept of uh, acousmatic sound. And basically, and, th and this is, um, I feel like this is like one of the big things that drew me into Prime because this was the game that like when I knew like, oh, Metroid is really special. And this concept of the music, once again, this takes from Hip Tanaka's original vision of blending the music and the environment together. But the concept of acousmatic sound is basically um, a sound without an inaudible source. So let's say you're in your room and you hear like a, a gunshot. I mean, we're just throwing out random <laughs> sounds. That would technically, well, well, no, that would technically be an acousmatic sound because you hear a noise, but you don't see the source where the noise came from. And so that's basically what an acousmatic sound is. It comes, I believe it comes, um, if I believe its roots come from uh, from uh, Greek, but and and that's basically the philosophy of Metroid Prime soundtrack is that is that the music it it does this fine gray area that takes place between the diegetic and non diegetic world, and basically basically die, diegetic music is uh, is music that is actually present within the in the game world and non-diegetic music is not present in the game world it's just stuff that the audience hears um a good example for that uh for you and our listeners if you're maybe not familiar with the terminology uh let's take star wars for example because you know you've probably all seen star wars by now uh you know whenever you hear uh, john williams opening title crawl theme or or you know um or the ship battle themes you know that's non-diegetic music that is music that is playing for the audience but that's not something that the in-universe characters can hear However, um, let's do episode four. Let's go to uh, the cantina, you know, when Luke uh, and Ben go to the cantina and there's the band playing. Well, that's, that is diegetic music because that's music that the characters do hear as well as the audience. Does that make sense? 
Oh yeah, that that makes sense. I know the difference between those two. What what All would right. you say is like good examples of that, like Metroid Prime then? So so me- what Metroid Prime does is it like it's technically the music is technically non diegetic because this isn't music that Samus or any of the other characters in the world can hear, but it like it plays it so close to the line and it it does this gray area by utilizing a cosmetic sound, um the title theme in particular. Um, and if you want to, and by the way, if you want to hear some of these sam- samples for yourself, uh, look up Cinemax on YouTube. He and his community, they've, um, they're a bunch of musicologists that have uncovered like, um, a bunch of the original, um, a bunch of the original synthesizers and patches and samples that Yamamoto used on the Metroid Prime Trilogy. And he's actually done multiple videos uploading them as well as done a few, uh, brand new songs using those patches as well. So definitely check him out. But the Metroid Prime title theme, like right from the get go, it just sets the whole tone from the game by doing this because, you know, you have these, you know, you have um, um, the main melody come in, which is the original uh, NES Metroid theme at a lower key. But then you also have these gross, squishy, organic sounds as the camera is panning around on the inside of the Metroid creature. And it blends in with the music so well. And, and that's what I mean when I say the gray area between diegetic or non-diegetic music. Because the player is then questioning, like, wait, is this the sound, sound the creature is making? Or is this part of the music? I'm not entirely sure. And it's such a unique approach to music that I, up until that point, I had never experienced before. And, yeah. So you, you, can, tell, you can tell how fascinated I am by it. Because, like, I'm just, I'm losing my mind. And that's just one track. Like, you know, another great example is the Impact Crater theme, where, I mean, you you have all that. You have these Geiger counter sounds that go in, that go in tandem with the melody, but now the chords are, are all dissonant and apart from each other, and it's just, oh, God, I can... I'm going to stop talking, because I, I could go on this for, for ages. No, we got a no. Lot more games to cover. I could listen to you talk about Metroid Prime music all day, man. I mean, I, I love the soundtrack, and you could phrase all that stuff way better than I really ever could. But I definitely feel you. I love how it like it works in those weird visceral sounds and, and sound effects into the music and into the environment. So it's not just, you know, the sa- track you're hearing, but also like it feels like you're actually entering like in you're going inside of like some kind of creature. I mean, we go back to that philosophy of making it not sound like a game, but like sounds like you're going into like a living kind of thing. I think Metroid Prime does that to a degree in, in many different cases. Another game I think does that to a degree too is is Metroid Fusion for the Game Boy Advance, which is also a soundtrack I think is honestly kind of underrated. I think it was really held back by being on the Game Boy Advance. I think it is very prime esque in its range. It has a lot of similar kind of tracks, and like Sector Four feels like it could be right out of Metroid Prime. Has a lot of swelling and and shrill sound effects to add like the intensity and tension and anticipation because it's, it does have that like mystery element to the story. I love like the under, underwater theme. That's also a really standout theme for me as well as the different boss themes. I love the Steris boss theme. Really good. Uh, to be honest, and this is I, this might be a hot take, but I really think that like. You know, Super Metroid soundtrack, because of the the game that it is, and it was on console, those tracks, like, ended up getting translated to, like, Metroid Prime and so on and so forth. I honestly think Metroid Fusion's soundtrack can translate to other Metroid games just as well. I think there are a ton of tracks in this game that are really good, and maybe I'm just, I have rose-tinted glasses, but, and then maybe I'm just being nostalgic, but the tracks for this game are specifically really good for Metroid Fusion, because it has it adds a lot to that mystery and horror like element, which so far maybe up until Metroid Dread has mostly been in fusion and not really much else uh, you know elsewhere maybe except like Echoes. But I would also say that Fusion soundtrack has just as much potential to translate to other Metroid games as Super's does, and I think it really kind of didn't because it came out after Super and because it was on the Game Boy Advance where the, the hardware really didn't do the soundtrack justice. Maybe that's a hot take. And maybe it's because I love Metroid Fusion, but I think the soundtrack of this game is really good. Uh, what do you think? I don't think that's a hot take. I agree. I think Fusion's soundtrack is pretty underrated. Because I think everyone agrees that, you know, like, the Sector 1, the SRX theme is, you know, pretty good. That's I feel like that's considered, like, the main theme of Fusion to a degree. Like, similar to, like, Brinstar and NES Troid. Mm-hmm. But, like, um, but yeah... So this was so this was done by the other half of the dream team. This was led by Minako Hamano, 
uh, reprising her role from Super Metroid, along uh, with newcomer to the series Akira Fujiwara, and that is the only time uh, that they would be composing music for Metroid, as of now at least. And uh, yeah, I don't have too much to say about about Fusion. Um, it goes for like this really unique, almost uh, almost espionage kind of take on the music. I'm not exactly sure how to describe it. Like, mm-hmm. uh, you, you know what I you know what I mean? I because right, yeah, it gives yeah, yeah, this, yeah, I definitely because it gives this impression that like Samus is out of her depth, and it really gives the imp- impression that she's being uh, that she's being hunted, which I'm sure we're going to be seeing a lot of. Uh, a similar approach taken to uh, more of Dread's music as that comes along as well. But yeah, you mentioned a lot of uh, a lot of unique themes as well. You know, Ceres, like, when when has there ever been a Metroid track, even to this day, that sounds anything like Ceres' theme? It's like this pop theme, which normally would feel out of place in a Metroid game, but I think it really, I think it really works with those, um, with those uh, emphasi- emphasized uh, kick drums that really give um, a really consistent beat to it. And it, and it emphasizes the fast-paced nature of this, since, you know, Ceres holds the the speed booster in that fight as well. Uh, you mentioned the underwater theme. That's probably my favorite track in Fusion. Um, I absolutely love it. It kills me that it's limited to the GBA speakers, because yep. you know, there's so much uh, distortion and graininess to it. And it would just be really nice to hear, you know, those original samples, like, without any of that compression. But... Alas, even even with that graininess, I still think the track uh, comes out really well done. I 100% agree. And honestly, I also think... I, I like this Ridley theme, too. It's not my favorite, but I think it's it's also underrated. And I would also say that I, I love that... I'm not even would also say, I am going to say, that I love, like, the added, like, harp-like strings that you get, like, when you're in those, like, mysterious kind of parts where you're uncovering part of the story oh, or you're hearing do, like do, sus deep yeah do, 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 yeah I, yeah, yeah exactly yeah. it has that like i don't know maybe it's uh like not twin peaks but like one of those kind of shows fusion like, soundtrack is very ominous compared to other yeah, games like it really so good because and i and i think it makes sense because this is really the first metroid game that really puts the story at more of a forefront of the game and so because it's emphasizing those plot twists and just the general mystery of it i think that's I think the, that really translates well into the soundtrack throughout. I I really love the soundtrack for this game, and I'm going to rank it high. Um, I also got to give a shout out real quick. Uh, the Sector 2 and uh, Sector 4 themes, uh, very underrated bops as well. In fact, I'd even, I'd even put a Sector 4 personally above Sector 1 for myself. I absolutely love the Sector 4 theme. Well, tell me if you love the soundtrack of the next game, which is metroid zero mission also for the game boy advance so coming from fusion which came out you know two years prior and this is obviously being a remake of a game that we've already discussed a little bit but you know the original metroid for the nes what are your thoughts on this soundtrack for zero mission uh zero mission is a pretty solid soundtrack um it doesn't do uh it doesn't do that much new that hasn't already been done in previous games uh, but, you know, for what it is, I really like it. It's got catchy themes. Uh, Kenji Yamamoto and Minako Hamano once again reuniting together uh, to do this game. And you can hear a lot of uh, the themes that they composed from Super Metroid also prevalent uh, throughout the span of the game. Uh, one of the one of the most unique tracks, and it definitely I think it carries over from Fusion's more ominous atmosphere, is um, the Space Pirate Mothership boarding theme when you just crash land on the planet. Uh, when Samus is in her zero suit and you first board that plane and this just this just sounds like a straight up James Bond theme I think you know or like a Mission Impossible theme you literally I have this in my notes a space pirate mothership theme low key banger <laughs> and you said that I'm like oh yeah that is one of the I think the best and like most underrated tracks of the game my favorite personally is the Norfair theme I just that when when I think of Zero Mission, I I hear that track in my head. Like that is the standout track from the entirety of Zero Mission, as far as I'm concerned. But yeah, a I, lot otherwise... of people. Or sorry, go on. No, no, go ahead. I was gonna say a lot of people also don't realize, but that mothership boarding theme it's actually a new arrangement of the wrecked ship theme from Super Metroid. A lot of people don't catch oh, that. Wow. No, I definitely didn't. That's probably why it's so good. That's it's true. Yeah, Super Metroid soundtrack, pulling through once again. Um, Next up, after that, back to the GameCube Metroid Prime 2 Echoes. 
This is, I mean, how do you follow up on Metroid Prime, right? Like, one of the best games out for the GameCube, one of the best soundtracks in the series. Like, following up on that, I think, is really hard. I think they did a pretty decent job. I think, I mean, the soundtrack is, is really good overall. I wouldn't say it stacks up to Metroid Primes, though. I would, I, you know, I would definitely put Metroid Primes over it. I think that's just because of the nature of the game. A lot of the soundtrack, I think, is a bit more subdued and tense overall. It doesn't have the same kind of range to the same extent as Prime, I would say. Uh, some tracks even feel almost somewhat copy and pasted from Prime and with minor changes, like the Space Pirates theme is, is one that comes to mind where I'm like, oh, this is pretty much exactly as it was in the original Metroid Prime with a little bit of variance. But obviously you have like the Temple Grounds theme, which is a classic. I love that one. And the different kinds of drums that are ample, like in, in percussion that is used in this game as compared to Prime, I thought was good. And overall, I'd still rank it as a pretty high and, and quality OST, but it's hard to follow up on Metroid Prime for sure. Metroid Prime 2 Echoes is a phenomenal soundtrack that I hold very dearly. I think... I think the the one disadvantage that it has that I can say about it in relation to Prime is that Prime kind of it opens the floodgates for Kenji Yamamoto's unique style style of approach to the music and Prime 2 it's more of an iteration on that. It's not like yep. it doesn't offer a lot of brand new things. And so in that regard Prime Prime 1 is definitely the more innovative of of the two soundtracks, but I think but again, I think Prime 2 innovates on that already good prime formula and i think it nails it out of the park on you know all fronts um i really love this soundtrack again it nails that gray area between diegetic and non-diegetic utilizes that philosophy of a of a cosmetic sound um, you hear it all throughout the game in tracks like the emperor ing theme um the hive tunnels theme the splinter high the splinter hive um you hear it you even hear it in the um in uh you in yumas's theme you know, where you can hear the, um, you know, the synthesized choirs in the background that, that like, normally normally in music, like, they would sound like fake choirs, but in the context of Metroid game, they don't sound fake. They sound alien. It feels like there's a literal alien choir greeting you, like, as you step onto this uh, once holy land. And just, it just absolutely engrosses me from start to finish. And... It also has my favorite Metroid track of all time, but we'll get to that track once we do our rankings. Well, I'll talk more about that. Oh, there. okay. All right. I can't wait to know what that is. Yeah, uh, I won't yeah. spoil it just yet. I would definitely put this up highly, but um, I would still put Metroid Prime before it. Speaking of another Metroid Prime game, though, we have technically Metroid Prime Pinball after this one. I didn't uh, rank this because I was like, oh, this is just Metroid Prime music but apparently they are slightly new arrangements right yeah every yeah every single track in this game is a brand new arrangement or um a, re a recover i think the title theme the title theme isn't a brand new arrangement it's just an it takes the exact same instruments from the echoes theme and just um and just uh reorganizes some of them and takes away um takes away a couple of the background instruments made probably to fit on the ds cartridge or something like that but yeah, other otherwise the entire soundtrack, they're brand new arrangements from start to finish. Um, as much as I love pinball, there's really not much to say here. Honestly, the soundtrack is good, but I think they're just slightly worse versions of what we already got in Primes One and Two, with the exception, of course, of the legendary pirate frigate theme, uh, done by Kenji Yamamoto. Actually, b before we do it, this whole soundtrack was uh, done by Kenji Yamamoto. And a series newcomer, Masaru Tajima, who would uh, later return for a future entry that we'll get to in a bit. But yeah, soundtrack was done by those two. And the Pirate Frigate theme in particular was solely done by Kenji Yamamoto. All the guitar work that you hear that you hear on that, that is all Kenji playing his guitar. And you, you can actually hear a lot of that too um, in Excite Truck, which he also did with uh, Tajima-san. And you can hear him playing guitar in that soundtrack as well. But yeah, Sight Truck is that? Yeah, I love that game. By the way, super like, underrated game. Awesome game, dude. Oh, that brings me back. Sorry, but but yeah, yeah. but yeah. Um, Pirate Frigate, absolutely goaded theme. Uh, Kenji Yamamoto even uh, returned uh, to Smash Brawl 
and did an extended version of that theme and added a bunch of um, other unique instruments to that as well. That's how good it was. People actually think that this theme originated in Smash, but no, it originated in Pinball. And yeah, so other than that one theme, um, I would say it's mostly just a forgettable soundtrack, but yeah, Pirate Frigate is absolutely GOAT. Yeah, that's how how it how I would mark it. You did bring up the guitar though. I actually forgot to mention that for Echoes. I love when the the main title theme like transitions into like the guitar breakdown. Yeah, down, oh, down, so down, good. down, down, down. Oh, yeah, so good, so good. Um, now yeah, next, I, I like those. Yeah, I was gonna yeah. say I love I love those little um I love those little highlights of you know Kenji Yamamoto just not 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 doing an entirely guitar uh, theme track. Obviously, Pinball's an exception, which makes sense for that. But I like. I like when he does these little brief inserts of live instrumentation throughout um, throughout his music, which we, we we touched a little bit about on the Discord, and I think we'll talk about that once we get to the um, the next game that he composed. But first, we have to go uh, to one title before that, which I think you have quite a bit to talk about. Really? Uh, I actually don't have too much to talk about this one. Metroid Prime Hunters for the DS. Really? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I love Hunters. One of my favorite games for the DS of all time. I'm one of my favorite Metroid games. I absolutely love this game, but one of its weakest parts is definitely the soundtrack. I Really? I, I, oh, yeah. The OST wow, is definitely I'm not... Sh- wow, I am shocked. <laughs> I mean, I always remember growing up never really having the sound on for this game. I would be listening to music otherwise. I always thought the soundtrack wasn't really great i particularly have never liked the the character like specific hunter or enemy themes i've never liked them i always thought they felt really cheesy and like i wish they were kind of more serious they felt kind of silly and not like they didn't feel like metroid themes they felt like i was they, they really sounded like the metroid prime 2 multiplayer sound like music um so yeah, actually, I mean, outside of those themes, like the location areas, like the Alanos Gateway, like some some decent tracks, but I think this is definitely one of the weakest OSTs in the series. Not one that I have any kind of particularly fond memories of, despite me loving the game otherwise. Like, this is literally probably the only aspect of the game I really don't enjoy overall. And I wouldn't even say I don't enjoy, just not one that sticks out to me too much. Like, I even don't mind the campaign, but the OST, I think, is probably its weakest asset like it it does the job it's efficient but there aren't any memorable tracks as far as i'm concerned i don't really like the hunter themes they don't really work for me and i wish there were there were so many opportunities to do better music especially on the ds and with what kind of game it was and it felt um a bit like i don't know just didn't land nothing really memorable sometimes a bit too gamey or upbeat which i kind of wish they weren't but maybe that's just personal preference but yeah actually not really one of my favorite osts which i guess is surprising you Wow, and I thought Metroid 2 was a plot twist. This is, I, I genuinely did not see this coming. I am shocked. So you actually brought up the Hunter themes, and I actually agree with you there. I do think the Hunter themes, I don't like, um, th- so actually before I go into this, uh, Hunters, both this as well as the first Hunt demo, uh, was composed by Lord Schwedler and James Philipson. Uh, they, I believe they worked for um, Nintendo Software Technology at the time, and this is uh, the only game in their portfolio regarding to Metroid. But uh, yeah, I agree with you on the Hunter themes, actually. I, I get what they were trying to do. You know, you have you know, you know have a basic medley that's consistent throughout all six of the Hunter themes. Um, and then you compile um, uh, some unique instruments for each of the Hunters theme to make it stand out a little bit more. I get, what they, I get what they were trying to do, but I do agree that it just ends up getting really repetitive. And yeah, um, yeah. especially, and, and unfortunately that doesn't really help, you know, in the campaign sense, because... You know, as much as I, I like Hunters, the campaign is super repetitive, especially with, mm-hmm. you know, you really fighting bosses all the time and all that. You um And then, yeah, you combine that. You combine that with the Hunters themes that sound very same with some slight variations. Like, you combine that together and it doesn't it doesn't feel like um the thematic unity. It just feels like unnecessary repetition and it becomes kind of a slog. But those Hunter themes aside... Man, I think Hunters is probably the single most underrated soundtrack in the Metroid really? series. Yeah, I I think that this theme has a bop. And and again, I'm surprised cuz I cuz like I know you love the menu theme. I know you've talked about how Oh much yeah, you the, love menu the menu theme is is awesome. I love the menu theme. That's Yeah, like it's yeah, it's the super one track. <laughs> yeah, it's super yeah, the menu theme is super unique, you know. It had, you know, it gives off um I'm not even sure what what kind of vibe I can describe. It just sounds very different. It accents off it's accents uh, off beats um, 
on the ands and us rather than the um, rather than the one twos and threes, which I I think is really fascinating. Specifically, um, specifically like the snares, not the um, you know not the hi hats, but yeah, I really like that menu theme. Um, a track that I think is again super underrated, and this is probably in like my top fifteen, maybe even my top ten. The Guardians theme. Now, fighting the Guardians is super annoying. Really? I hate I hate fighting them, but man, the Guardians theme is an absolute bop. I love it. Um, you know, lots of um it feels like it you know, it feels like kinda it feels like a techno track in the style of a metal song. I don't really know how to describe it, because there's a lot of emphasis on like double bass and stuff like that, and it just really it, like I feel like it really gets you pumped. But it also has these little it has these little uh, ominous instrumental cues that are... <laughs> yeah, I know exactly yeah, yeah, what yeah. You're about. yeah. Yeah, I absolutely love that Guardians theme. And then there's also um the data storage theme, which is the uh, the second theme. Not when you revisit Celestial Archives for that second octolith, but during your first trip, there's uh there's two themes that play in this uh the second theme. It to me like this just sounds like a classic Metroid track through and through, but it's not like a cover of a previous track. It's like it's an originally unique theme, and I really like it. It's this really, it's this really soft track that uh, emphasizes uh, choirs and uh, and weirdly enough bass guitar as well. And I think the two just meld together really nicely to create this very peaceful uh, melodic rhythm to it. And I think it really fits the environment too. But yeah, I think mm. yeah, I think Hunters is super underrated. I also like the Vesper Defense Outpost theme. You know, I love yeah, I that love is the a good kind one. of I like the uh, military snares that are kind of used to mock, like uh, or not mock, but used to uh, emulate kind of like um, kind of like a two four marching style beat. I really like that as well. And then and then yeah, of course you mentioned the 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 multiplayer themes. All the multiplayer themes are really good in my opinion. So yeah, maybe I just maybe maybe I need to go back again, and maybe I'm not uh, giving it its due justice. But I do remember revisiting it. Well, when I just revisited it, I was just like, oh, maybe this, maybe I gotta give it a better a better run. But I do, dude. The menu theme though is burned into my brain. I will mm-hmm. say that like there's so many so many hours just sitting on the menus, like trying to connect to like a game, like letting the Wi-Fi connection thing run. Like that, that is burning in my brain for sure. I'm just, it's one of those like OSTs that like, maybe I just got to go back and revisit it harder. It just, nothing really stuck out to me too hard. And maybe it's just the, the character themes that kind of overdid it for me. I'm sorry. Uh, my other hunters fans out there, maybe I'm just not doing it justice. I'm gonna have to go back to it and, and, and give also, it another go. Also one more shout out. I hated fighting this thing four times in a row throughout the campaign, but a uh, shout out to the slunch theme as well. Uh, heavily influenced by the Ridley theme. Uh, it doesn't quite surpass it, in my opinion, but I think it stands on its own, uh, despite those clear influences. And it also has a nice... Um, uh, it also um, it changes up its time signature throughout, too, which is pretty unique for Metroid music. It usually keeps the same time signature throughout, but but yeah, Slunch uh, consistently uh, changes it throughout, um, throughout some of the verses, which I think is a really interesting feature of it. Well, let's jump on to another interesting game and one of my favorites and one of my favorite OSTs as well in the series. It's Metroid Prime 3 Corruption. I love this OST as well, and I would I would place it above Prime 2, but I'm not going to give away my exact rankings of it. But I think this what this game did, at least personally, as far as I was concerned, is that unlike Prime 2, it felt like it stepped away more from the original Prime sound a bit. Like I think that game had more of an, like a unique sound to it than prime 2 did compared to the first prime game it really feels like heightened and elevated like it's absolutely a finale there are some extremely iconic themes like the rundus theme of course is one that is one of the best themes in all of metroid but like even like the the bryo theme or sky town you know, absolutely extremely good i love how we have like the original meta ridley theme show up again without any changes but then he gets the omega ridley theme later and i think that's a really solid track as well even like the intro just when you have like that immediate like high-pitched choir like it's it has like there's such an epic feel to it which i think out excels more compared to the other metroid prime games where those games are certainly more um you know isolated adventures and explorations and they also kind of look inward they're a little more intimate this is like a, a bombastic epic end to the trilogy at the you know at the time and 
it re- I think it really fits. I absolutely love the soundtrack of this. One of my favorite games uh, in terms of soundtracks. You have like so- like some tracks that feel like they're mixtures of previous Prime uh, themes. Like again, like the Brial theme, I feel like is like a mix of the Chozo Ruins, like Magmor and Talon Overworld themes, sl- all slapped together. And it, at the same time, it has like good um, like translations and redos of other themes. I think there's like the Samus mission briefing theme is like the theme of Samus, or, like theme of the hunter um, from the, the 2D Metro games, which is really good. And it has its own stuff, too. And it really is truly awesome. I love this OST. I'm curious to what you think on it. So I'm not going to spoil my placement on this as well, but Prime 3 is probably... Uh, probably my least favorite of the Prime trilogy. Actually, not probably. It, really? it is my it is it is my least favorite. That's not to really? say that it isn't a great soundtrack. Because I mean, Prime Three is is wonderful. But yeah, out of out of Prime One and Two, this is definitely would take the the bottom slot of those. But I mean, that's not a bad thing, you know. Not everything can be number one. That's totally cool. And Prime Three, uh, it's a great soundtrack. And you actually brought up something. Uh, that I really like is, you know, while I do love Prime 2, unlike Prime 2, uh, Prime 3 does offer uh, a little bit of a, of a unique atmosphere to it, because obviously Prime 3 in general is a much more cinematic game. You know, you have more bombastic set pieces. You have voice acting for the first time in a Metroid game uh, outside of the last Metroid is in captivity. So you have that yeah. prevalent throughout the game. And so you have a very, uh, you know, the first mission is basically Pillar of Autumn from Halo. So you have all that. Yeah, and so and so yeah, you have um, some changes in the soundtrack to accommodate that, and uh, man, that title theme, that so you know what, Prime Three might be my least fa- favorite of um, of the Prime soundtracks, but my God, that title theme, that is, that might be my favorite Metroid title theme. I love it so much, um, you know, and and again, this it's a purely like, purely like orchestral em- emulated emulated title theme. Uh, doesn't use live instruments, but honestly, like it, I wouldn't be able to tell otherwise if unless someone told me because it sounds so good. Um, you have and you have hints of that bleeding in through the rest of the soundtrack as well. Like you brought, like uh, you brought up the Rundus theme. You know, run. You know, Rundus is this. I think a really good combination of those two philosophies where you still have, you know, this acus. You know, this acousmatic sound, this gray area between diegetic and non-diegetic. You know, with Kenji Yamamoto's uh, instrumentals that instruments and patches and synths that he's been using throughout the trilogy up to this point, but then you also have the addition of like these percussive snare drums and these um, these clashes of cymbals and you know these horns and, and woodwinds and stuff like that. And I don't I don't think it works all together throughout the soundtrack, but I think in a lot of places it does. In particular, the Rundus theme. Uh, you brought up Sky Town, which is just. I mean, what, it's such a gorgeous theme. Like, what can you even say about that? And and also, we you know, we talked a little bit about earlier about, you know, Kenji bringing in guitar and stuff like that. You know, this game, you know, pinball aside, I think this is definitely the most, you know, we've seen that guitar, like, make little accents. You know, going yeah. back to that Rundus theme again, you know, you have that, you have it playing, like, small notes Ba-da-da-da. throughout. And then you... And then you have that ending where where Kenji Yamamoto just goes into a full breakdown and just goes um, with the guitar actually being a leading instrument rather than this background instrument that provide mm-hmm. that provides uh, notes and a couple chords here and there, which I think is cool. And I think it and I think it really um, speaks to Rundus' style as well with how you know he's um, made out to be throughout the course of the game. So I think that works as well. Gandreda's theme also a bob. I really like. Um, I really like the, um, oh, I don't even know what the digital instrument is called. It was, um, but yeah, you can, this is another one you can look up on uh, Cinemax's channel, but it's a really, it's this really cool um, kind of metronome style, style instrument. It kind of sound, it kind of sounds almost xylophone-ish. So, okay. It sounds like something between a xylophone and like a triangle, but it's like this really cool, it's this really cool patch that uh, Kenji has on one of his setups. And, uh, and yeah, there's also, um, the pirate homeworld theme uh, from Super yes. Metroid. Um, I like I like that I like how it's slowed down and it kind of emphasizes these very long drawn out drones um, and some of them on some of the lower end um, of his uh, digital piano that he played. I think it comes out really nice there. Yeah, I I love the soundtrack. I'm I'm surprised because you just gave a lot of good comments for it, so I'm surprised you have this pretty low. Well, I'm talking one. Well, one. I'm, I'm talking about the music that I that I enjoy from the game because oh, I, I think yeah. there's because I think there's other like, like um. 
I honestly, I think most of the boss battle themes aren't very good. Like, with the exception of, like, you know, Omega Ridley, I think, is good. Um, the new Dark Samus theme, it's really good, but I don't think it's as good as the Echo's Dark Samus theme. Um, I think the Aurora unit theme at the end is okay. Uh, I'm not fan a fan at all of the Mogginar theme. I ju it's just kind of eh, but but yeah. Well, I'm I'm curious to see where that lines up on ours overall because I, I think that one's going to be in wildly different places on both of our lists. But now here's the game that I think I'm not sure what you think I think of this game soundtrack. So I'm I want to hear what you think of the game soundtrack first. Not that I'm going to change my opinion or anything, but I want to know what you think. Uh, honestly, I I could see you going either way with this or even somewhere okay. in the middle. Um, for me, I'm I'm gonna take the middle road. I I think Metroid Other M has an okay soundtrack um this one uh or actually you know what uh, before we do that uh corruption uh this was done by kenji yamamoto minako hamano and uh masaru tajima who returned from pinball and uh minako pinball. hamano yeah yeah because kenji yamamoto and masaru tajima they did pinball together yeah and he and he was on corruption and minako hamano this is the first 3d metroid game the first prime game she did because up until this point uh she's only done 2d games but anyways Back to Other M. Uh, this was done by Kuniaki Haishima uh, and uh, for the orchestral sections, because Other M does use um, does use an orchestra in some of its tracks. Uh, that orchestra was conducted by uh, Sachiko Miyano. And so I think Other M's soundtrack is okay. I think there's a few bangers in there, a few good environmental tracks. Overall, I I would I would give I would say this one's a pretty average soundtrack. Not amazing, not terrible got a few bops in there but you know nothing that apart apart from a track here and there nothing that really stands out but nothing that i think is offensively bad either if that makes sense um the ridley theme the new ridley theme that's fully orchestrated um really good really good theme there i really like that um both of the uh both of the sector one themes the biosphere themes the first one actually it reminds me so much of sector one from metroid fusion Mm -hmm. uh, it's why it's what uh, got me to do a mashup of that for those who've uh, for those who've heard um, Power Down and Sector One mashup between those two themes. But yeah, it gives me huge fusion vibes listening to that. And then the uh, the second theme, it sounds like something out of an anime, but I feel like it weirdly works in in the context. It's like this very, uh, despite the fact that it's an environmental theme, it has very uh, fast percussion and like um, drum rolls and stuff like that. I think that's really cool. I think most of the boss themes are forgettable and kind of fall flat. It just, those feel just kind of like generic orchestral Hollywood music to me. They don't really yeah. have unique themes that stand out to me. Again, apart from that Ridley theme, but you know, that's, it's the Ridley theme. It uses that same, those same motifs, melodies, and harmonies that, you know, we've been listening to for decades now. Um, but yeah, none of the unique boss themes like, like I remember a couple of them, but even then, like they're not super memorable. I think Borash's theme is okay. That's the burning fish monster, but again, like <laughs> yes, compared Borash. to Borash, but like compared to other Metroid boss themes, like I don't think it holds a candle to some of the others. And not and Nightmare, Nightmare doesn't even bring back the fusion theme. It's a brand, it's a brand new theme, and it sucks. <laughs> I I don't like the Nightmare theme at all in this game. No, the Nightmare theme in Fusion is way better. Oh yeah, I I, I would agree. I think this is. Pretty middle of the road, all things considered. But I actually like this uh, soundtrack. I think it's yeah. it's not it's not bad. It's it's pretty good for for all the things other M does wrong. The the soundtrack is not one of them. I would say like it is. It has so many other things that it can be knocked down for. That the soundtrack is definitely not one of the things I would take the time to do it uh, with. You know the Ridley theme, of course. I think is one of the best tracks. Like it, one of the best Ridley arrangements in the series. And I really like, I actually like the, the Fantoon boss theme. I think it's pretty solid. It also has one of my favorite Metroid tracks of all time, the, the piano track, uh, Fine in the oh, Memento. Yeah. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful track. I mentioned this on a previous episode. It, it also plays, uh, it would also play it on like the other M website before the game came out. And in game, it actually doesn't have like an ending because like the, the alarm goes off in game. And you never get a true ending to the song. And I don't think it was ever posted either, but... I love that track. It's one of my favorite Metroid songs of all time. It's just a really solid and simple piano song, but it like it builds over time. It's so beautiful, and it, it, I'm like that. I would love more music like that in Metroid. It like incorporates some 
like string element, like string instruments in the back. It's it's really good. And I really love the escape theme too. Like, and that that is really solid. I, I think there are some more tracks in the game uh, that I'm willing to give credit for. And even though it doesn't have too many memorable tracks, I think it has a decent amount. Uh, Final mission resolve. I don't know if I mentioned that. That's another really good theme too. Yes, I agree. That's a yes. really good one too. Yeah. Um, it's it's really a shame that it, it's a shame that it only plays for like thirty seconds and then you never hear it again. But yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, that's a. I think that's a running theme with a lot of the songs I like in Other M is that you get a taste of them and then you don't really get much else and then you get kind of more filler tracks more often. But overall, I actually think the Other M OST is pretty good. I one of the better part. Really, the finishing moves and the soundtrack are probably the best and only redeemable parts of that game. Um, I, I I actually got the most like alien and aliens kind of feel from it from this OST. I think this the soundtrack of this game really got gave me a, a very alien feel to it, like more than other Metroid games in a way. I don't know if that like it has that like intense horror feel to it, even though Other M isn't really kind of a horror game, but like a lot of the background and like ambient tracks are very tense and sh and and don't have a more low key subdued feel to them when you're exploring the ship. They feel very tense, almost at times more tense than like some tracks in Fusion, where that game like the mystery and horror elements are way more emphasized. But even then in other M I think you know has similar elements to Fusion because it's you know Walmart Fusion. So it has similar kind of yeah. like mystery elements and intense mem you know, moments to it. So the soundtrack kind of adapts to that. And I think it does a pretty solid job. It gave me that alien feel to it, which obviously comes through because it's a Metroid game. But I think soundtrack-wise, Metroid games kind of go way past the alien inspiration that the series has. And I think Other M actually sticks to it pretty solidly. So, yeah, I, I actually don't mind the soundtrack for Other M. It's pretty good. My big criticism with Other M soundtrack is I think it relies a bit too much on uh, standard ambiance. And yeah. when I say that, when I say that, I mean Metroid is full of ambiance throughout its series. But it's unique. Yeah, exactly. Like, like whichever composer you look at, even even uh, Ryoji Yoshitomi, they all had unique takes on how to interpret that ambiance, mm -hmm. whether it be through melody or whether it be incorporating sounds that could be taken as sounds coming from the environment. Other M, uh, for the for the most part, um, it's just kind of these. It's kind of just these long, low drones that all kind of blend together and sound the same, unless you're like listening to them side by side where you can really tell the difference. And I think doing that once in a while can really be a good effect. I think going back to Corruption for a moment, GFS Valhalla is pretty much one of those tracks. And I think because the game doesn't do that often, when that track does happen, it's really creepy and unsettling. But in Other M, because you hear that all the time, I feel like the effect wears off really quick and I feel like it could have used with some more harmony in those tracks so that when it did go for those lone drones, you know, maybe towards the end of the game when you go to Sector Zero, you know, it could have given the player this different sense of feeling of, uh, of you know, dread. <laughs> I know we like to use that <laughs> word a lot now with dread coming out, but yeah. And, and so I think Other M kind of misses the mark on that point. But like you said, I don't think it's a bad soundtrack at all. No. I think it's, I think it's you know, I think it's solidly mid-tier, you know? Yeah, it's a it's a pretty modernized Metroid track or soundtrack for better or for worse. And after that, for better or for worse, maybe leaning towards worse. I'm not sure how you feel about this uh, Metroid Prime Federation Force, which I honestly I don't even know. I don't the soundtrack doesn't seem very long to me. Maybe I just wasn't able to get access to a lot of the the music in this game. It, I I didn't have a really solid grasp of many tracks from Federation Force, and I've only played it not many times <laughs> so i'm not sure if you can go more in depth here but you are not going to believe this but federation force by far has more tracks than any other metro really game. it has no like way. it has something like 200 unique tracks are you I'm serious not even, i'm not even joking i i feel like i found two or three maybe i just don't <laughs> know how to use google anymore i don't know and I can remember maybe like three of them. And I think that's pretty much my, I think that pretty much sums up my thoughts on Federation Force, um, as well as Blast Ball. I'm going to, I'm going to count Blast Ball in this section as well. But yeah, it's, it's just, it's just forgettable. Like, okay, like every yeah. single, <laughs> like every single Metroid game, like, like from every, yeah, every single Metroid game has a, has some, a good portion of, of memorable tracks. Federation Force, there's really like, two or three that stand out to me and even then for the general public i think only one of those being uh the main title theme would really stand out to most people yeah. I, pr I don't think most people would even remember the other two 
um, being the the deployment theme, which I really like, um, as well as um, the uh, that the infiltration theme. That's the one where you break into the space pirate facility without your suit on. I really like that theme a lot. But yeah, otherwise, I mean, it's just it sounds like a generic sci-fi score, really. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's that's the vibe i got from it i feel like i listened to a few tracks and i'm like i feel like i've this is the same track <laughs> just with slight variations and it's all from some like sci-fi tv show or something like that yeah, yeah this not, was oh, yeah. sorry go on no, no go ahead i was gonna say yeah so um yeah so this soundtrack was done by chad york darren Rackey, and mike peacock who uh who work for next level games they work they do the the soundtracks for uh all of next level's games and it's it's a damn shame because I think they're really good composers and I think they've done really great soundtracks in the past. Their last game, Luigi's Mansion Three, I love the soundtrack in that game, but um, uh, but yeah, I don't think they uh, I don't think they hit the mark in Federation Force to say the least. I will say the the quality of the instruments they use, I think they sound really nice. Yes. But the actual the actual instruments themselves, very high quality instruments, despite the fact that they're all digital. I mean the orc. The orchestral sections it sounds like a live or orchestra despite um being digital synthesizers but uh yeah the actual composition of the music itself i just i think it misses the mark and our final game so far until later this year are we oh, are sorry. we gonna talk about uh am2r or are we gonna skip over that because i have because uh, i have that in my rankings i don't i do not have am2r in my rankings because at that point i i wasn't sure if we were going to be going into am2r or not but i am welcome to open the floor to you to talk about am2r because i did not rank am2r i went with official just straight up official metroid releases but feel free like give, give me your thoughts on am2r because i don't have any all right i'll i'll do it right down cause... at least yeah, yeah I'll, I'll make it quick since we're already uh, going pretty long in the podcast as it is but yeah uh, I really enjoy AM2R. Uh, the fact that Milton Guasti did this, who did like 95% of the work on this game, as well as composed like the vast majority of the soundtrack, just absolutely blows my mind. Uh, Milton is a much better composer than I am, and a better game developer. So yeah, it's no surprise that he's working at Moon Studios now. Uh, I love... Uh, I love the uh, reinterpretations of the classic Metroid themes, obviously. Uh, Hydro Station is a good one. Um, a lot of those Metroid 2 themes sound really good. The Queen Metroid theme sounds like it came right out of Metroid Prime. I absolutely love the new Queen Metroid theme. Uh, but my favorite track in um, in AM2R... I know I didn't say what my favorite track was in a, back when we were talking about it for Prime 2, but I, I, I'll say it for AM2R since it is a side game. Uh, easily uh, Ancient Power, which is one of the few original tracks in this game, which was uh, co-composed by both Guasti as well as Torby Brand. And Ancient Power, it really uh, it emphasizes uh, pentatonics a lot, um, which you don't see in a lot of Metroid music, but it's so unique, and yet it feels right at home. And so that's that's basically, I'll, I'll leave it at that for AM2R. So how does it compare to 2017's Metroid Samus Returns for the 3DS? How does it compare to the soundtrack from that game? Oh man, what a segue. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, I, you know what, we were talking a lot about underrated soundtracks, and I think Metroid Samus Returns is another criminally underrated soundtrack. Agreed. I absolutely, I love this Agreed. soundtrack yes. so much. Yeah, um, I think it, um, so Samus Returns, uh, uh, finally, we have Kenji Yamamoto returning again, hasn't composed a Metroid game since Corruption. He's back again, along with series newcomer Daisuke Matsuoka, who previously worked with uh, Yamamoto-san on Donkey Kong Country Returns for the Wii, along with a handful of other composers. But yeah, they return to Metroid Samus Returns. Yamamoto-san on this uh, on this soundtrack mainly uh, does uh, rearrangements of the of the work he did on Super Metroid, while Daisuke Matsuoka does most of the Metroid Two themes and the original tracks in this game, which I thought was pretty interesting. But overall, yeah, I think this soundtrack is a bop from start to finish. Um, not going to say exactly where it goes in my rankings just quite yet, but I do want to give uh, some highlights to uh, the Digger Knot theme, which sounds very similar to the Arachnus theme, but it's not quite the same. And I think it sounds really cool. It emphasizes a lot of the mechanical nature of that boss, while also uh, giving more uh, woodwinds and percussion a chance to shine as well. Uh, the new arrangement of the surface of SR388 
absolute bop as well. You know, I never thought that you could make a brand new arrangement of that theme that is as good as the original, but man, I think I think this is the one one that does it. This is probably my besides the original, I think this might be my uh, favorite rendition of that of that theme, like in, you know, spanning fan covers and all that cuz I absolutely love it. The last Metroid theme is really good as well. I don't think it quite fits. I don't think it quite fits the tone of the game, but just as a track on its own, I think it's really catchy and I really enjoy it just as a, its own standalone kind of thing. I also really like a lot of the environmental music. I don't think the environmental music gets a lot of shout out for this game, but I think it really but I think it really works as well, particularly because it cleverly interweaves a lot of the environmental sounds from Ryoji Yoshitomi's Metroid 2 soundtrack in places. Uh, one of the one of the ones that really sticks out to me, um, it's either Area Three or Area Four, but it references those first Metroid caverns um, in a new piece that uh, Matsuoka San composes, and it starts out with like those those bleeps and bloops the, and then it like transitioned into its own unique original theme and just creative stuff like that. I just I I really um, really enjoy. But yeah. Samus Returns, criminally underrated. Oh yeah, and the Ridley themes. All three of the Ridley themes. Absolute bops. Absolutely bop. Absolute bops from start to finish. Anyways, uh, you you go on now. I've been <laughs> hogging the spotlight for uh, way too long. Well, you covered everything I was going to say, man. I 100% agree. There are a ton of great tracks in this game. There are so many good arrangements that are some of the best in the series. I think it was either like Lower Brinstar or another track where they got like the flute going and they're just like in their bag for that one. So oh, I good. forgot. I forgot. Lower Brinstar, man. <laughs> so good. Um, and you mentioned the Ridley themes. The third phase Ridley theme is, is some of, some of the strongest Metroid music. Like that is that is a boss theme right there. Yeah, and... it gave me a lot of fusion vibes with how they um the they slowed down the uh, BPM for that. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned too how it, there's a lot of like prime esque elements to it, and I I agree. I think this soundtrack reminds me a lot of kind of Prime. Even, even like some of the arrangements feel like they're very influenced by like the Prime versions of them or whatever. And, well, there yeah. are well there are new arrangements of uh, Prime themes. Like you have the um the uh, the Chozo artifact collect theme. Yamamoto San yep. did a new version of that when you collect an Aeon upgrade. Uh, the end of the game has the Record of Samus theme, a brand new version of that that pops up. First time the Record of Samus has appeared in a two D game, by the way. So that, I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I love how Samus returns, like, not only in, like, bringing in Proteus Ridley who's, and, 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 and renditions of, like, Prime arrangements and whatnot. I feel like, I love how Mercury Steam is working more, like, Prime references into the 2D games and, and blending the line there. I've always loved that. And they're doing yeah. that more with Dread as well. Yeah, absolutely. It's so cool. It's it's not the first time that you we've seen musical cues from Prime, Prime in a 2D game. Yamamoto signs right. Zero Mission. Uh, the Chozo theme, where you're um, where you're crouching in, where you're crouching into the Chozo statue, and it tells you where to go, as well as the um, before the uh, the Chozo uh, ghost fight that gives you your uh, fully powered suit. Uh, that theme is a rearrangement of the Hall of Elders theme and the Chozo ruins, as well. So it's not the first not the first time that we've seen Prime music uh, rear its head into the 2D games, but it's definitely far more prevalent in uh, Samus Returns than in uh, prior 2D entries. So now we've gotten to the very end. We've gone through all the Metroid games, every single one, plus AM2R briefly, and now it's time to rank them. So we're going to just go, we're going to give our rankings. I, I don't know if you want to do bottom to top, top to bottom, first, last, last, first. We'll just, I guess we'll give you, we'll give our rankings separately. Um, I don't know if... Uh, yeah, I was, I was going to say, I was going to say we go uh, bottom to top on this one and also... Uh, we have a surprise for our guests as well. So obviously, uh, Andy is not here with us. He is a uh, currently off being uh, off being a husband right now. Uh, our wonderful yes. host, being a family has just man. gotten has just gotten married, and we're all super happy for him. However, before he left, uh, he gave us his own tier list, uh, oh, and yeah. we're going <laughs> and we're going to be reading off uh, his results as well. Uh, maybe making fun of some of those placements, maybe agreeing with some of those placements. I don't know. We'll see. Oh, wait, well, let's do that first. I want you, you have that on hand. Uh, yeah, yeah. I got both of yeah. the, I got both the tier lists pulled up. I well, what I was thinking is that we were going to do all, all these together. Like we were going to go over all of our F's, all of our D's, all of our C's, oh, et cetera, okay. et cetera. Um, well, what, what did you want to do? I figure we just go through our whole list all at once, you know, and just, and get right to it. So let, let's let's do that. I want to hear Andy's list from bottom to top. What okay, do you got right. for me? 
All right, we're going to do Andy's list first. Andy's uh, list. Here we go. Andy, uh, not able to defend himself, so this is uh, certainly not the <laughs> fairest of trials, but, you know, hey, you know. You know you, had to do it, you know you had to do it to him. In, to F, in F tier, the trash tier, uh, it's completely empty, actually. Uh, there's nothing in F tier. In D tier, uh, at the bottom, we have Metroid Prime Federation Force. Which okay. I think is fair. Metroid Fusion, which I know we both very Boo! much disagree on. Boo! V huge disagree. Uh, already, already, already sentencing him to ten years right off the bat. Um, and then followed by, and this one surprised me, the original Metroid game at the top of D tier, which I also have to disagree. Wow. Like I, I, I know it's, I know it's not much compared to what we've got, but like, I don't know. I think that soundtrack still holds up, Dak. What do you think? Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't want to give mine away too much, but I agree. I think it holds up. I and considering how standout it was for its time, I think it certainly has withstanded the test of time to a degree. So I, I think it's pretty good. All right, and then in C tier, at the bottom of C tier, we have Metroid Other M, followed by Metroid Prime Hunters, followed again by Metroid Prime Hunters First Hunt. I'm pretty sure Andy just grouped <laughs> those two together. <laughs> yeah, and then at the and then at the top of C tier, we got Metroid Zero Mission, which I also okay. don't agree. I also don't agree with that, but I um considering it's higher than Fusion, I'm not as opposed to that. I don't know. What are your thoughts on that, Dak? I think that's fine. I think a lot of it comes down to personal preference too. Yeah. So, you know. And and it's also you have to accommodate for the Game Boy Advance hardware, which does really put a put a dampener on a lot of that music as well. Yep. In B tier, at the bottom of B tier, this one this one might be the most surprising one of them all for me. Metroid Prime Blast Ball. What? <laughs> at the the at the bottom of B tier. I hey. To, you know what, to be fair, I like I does like the blast count? ball. Does it even count as a Metroid game? I don't even know if we can count it. I mean, I mean, blast ball was a standalone, uh, was a standalone download game apart from Federation Force. So I don't know. I guess it was. Yeah, I guess you're right. Like, like obviously you got them bundled together. If you if you buy Federation Force, it's in the menu. But you could also just download standalone blast ball for free. So I don't know. I I count them as separate. I guess. But yeah, Andy, Federation for or uh, blast ball bottom of B tier. Plot twist of the century. Followed up by Metroid Samus Returns. Okay. Then Metroid Prime 3 Corruption. Then followed by Metroid Prime Pinball. That really surprised me. All right. <laughs> and then at the top of B tier, we have Metroid 2 Return of Samus. Oh, uh, this guy is... this. Yeah, he, he ranks that soundtrack so high every time. I'm not surprised. And then we have uh, in A tier, in Andy tier... Uh, we only have fair. one. Yeah, we only have one game representing that, which is Metroid Prime Two Echoes, which I think is a pretty fair placement for that. Yep, good enough. Yep, and then we have S plus tier, the god <laughs> tier. We have at the bottom of S plus tier, we have AM Two R, and then we only have one more game to go in S plus tier before we get to the goat. So there's only two options remaining. What do you? What do you think the next game is, Dak? Oh, I know the second is Metroid Prime, and the and he's gonna put Super Metroid as the goat. I already know that. Uh, okay, well, you you clearly uh you know it's no no uh no secret that you've been podcasting with Andy. For well over <laughs> I, I know now. exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, that's no question. <laughs> Dak was like Psh, easy mode right here. Like, <laughs> I'm surprised Metroid Prime is as high up as it is. Dak. No, I'm actually not surprised. I think that's that's exactly what I would expect. But yeah, Metroid Prime, top of S plus tier, and then Andy's greatest of all time goes to Super Metroid, which I think is all around pretty fair placements. Obviously, yeah. I disagree with Metroid and Fusion's pl placement a little bit with uh, Zero Mission and uh, Blast Ball, but and, and Hunters as well. I obviously, but I feel I feel like that's the one where you're actually going to agree more with Andy. But yeah, I, I might be wrong there. I might have to go back and revisit it. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm willing to say that maybe I didn't do it justice, but. Eh, who knows? Uh, I'm willing for people to correct me in the comments for sure. I'm sh I'm waiting for Spire Fan and others to post like five or six tracks at a time. Like oh, these know, are all you know, the best tracks. You know, Spire Fan in the Discord. He's got that Metroid Prime Hunters Discord. He's got that yes. Metroid Prime Hunters Discord locked down. He knows the meta from top to bottom. He, they definitely know that I'm a huge Hunters fan, though. So I think whatever I said about the soundtrack will be forgiven. So. 
Um, <laughs> let me let me give my list because I, I want I want yours the best for last. I want yours to go last. So I'm gonna give my list. I didn't do tiers. I did scores. I'm just gonna go bottom to top and All we'll right. know what ranking they're in based on the order I give it. So right at the bottom with a, a 70, I gave Federation Force. I know I said Metroid 2 I said was the worst, but I wasn't being entirely true because I forgot about Federation Force at the time um, and wasn't looking all the way down there at my notes. I mean, but that's yes. fair. We all <laughs> forgot about Federation Force. Yeah, so at 70, right at the bottom, Federation Force. But right above that at a 75, I put uh, Metroid 2, Return of Samus, second to, second to last. Right above that, I put uh, Metroid Prime Hunters at an 83, which is still good. You know, eh, 80s is fine. You don't want to be in the seventies. Uh, I put the original Metroid right above that at eighty-five, and then once and then everything I think above that is good, like solid, like anything in the nineties, really like good if not great if not amazing. Um, so above Metroid, I put Metroid Zero Mission at ninety. Then I put Metroid Other M, gave it a ninety-two. Interesting. Uh, yes, I thought I think Other M is is not bad. Um, I put Metroid Prime 2 Echoes and Metroid Samus Returns tied for 93, score of 93, put those right next to each other, tie score. I put Metroid Prime 3 Corruption above those at 94. Then my top three, what do you think my top three is before I give it to you? There's three games left. I didn't include Pinball. I didn't talk about AM2R. I didn't talk about Blast Ball. So well, what, it's do, gotta, what do you think? Well, it's got to be uh, it's got to be Prime Fusion and Super, I would imagine. The question Ooh. is, which order is it going to be? Yeah, what's the order? Those are the last three. What's the order? Okay, well, I know, well, I know, I know. Prime is Goat. I I'm, I already know that ahead of time. I think. I don't know. Maybe maybe that's the real plot twist. Maybe maybe that's the real friends we made along the way. So you gotta commit. What's your, what's your guess? I I think Prime I think Prime is Goat, and then uh, Fusion is gonna be bottom of I, yeah i think it's gonna i think in order it's going to be prime super fusion that's my that's my final prediction almost at oh 90, at 95 i put super metroid 96 metroid fusion and 98 metroid prime Ooh, so, so close first second so and close. Thir- first second and third for me is metroid prime then metroid fusion and then super metroid but i will admit i think metroid fusion and super metroid are completely personal preference and interchangeable and aside from that, Metroid Prime is the GOAT. It is the top OST. It is the best one. It is at top. It is at 98. It is my favorite one and the best one that I'm going to high or rank highest. So that is my that is my ranking from top for bottom to top. Yeah, that's a, it's a solid list for sure. Absolutely. All from right, man. Mile. All right. It's time for list. yours. Let's get it. All right, so I so I did the same tier list uh, that Andy did. I, I actually made this uh, tier list myself using uh, custom album covers that I uh, made for all the Metroid games, so fun stuff there. But yeah, in F tier, the trash tier, uh, I also have nothing. I don't think there's any. I don't think there's any F tier Metroid soundtracks. No, there's. I think there's some that are worse than others, but not nothing that's just absolute garbage, you know. Mm-hmm. But. We do have this game called uh, Metroid Prime Federation Force, uh, and that is going to fit nice and snug into D tier, uh, because you know it's a uh, it, it it just doesn't Dac get the tier. degree. It doesn't. Yeah, <laughs> Dac tier. Nah, nah. Yeah, you're you're way better than Federation <laughs> Force. I can't I can't do that. But nah. In C tier, at the bottom of C tier, we got Metroid Prime Pinball, which again, you know how much I love that friggin' Orpheon theme, but otherwise, the soundtrack. It's passable. It gets a it gets a passing grade, just barely. At the top of C tier, we got Metroid Other M, I think. And uh, yeah, not much not much to say about it that I already have it before. In B tier, at the bottom of B tier, we have original NES Droid, which again, I think I think if we're judging that soundtrack by the time it was in, I would put that in S plus tier. Going back to modern standards, I think it still holds B, which is still. Still good. Oh, very good. Yeah, very good grade. Yeah. Better than a lot of games get That's today passing. still. <laughs> uh, very, very much so. And then just ahead of it, we got Metroid 2 Return of Samus, which uh, still I think is criminally underrated, and I have uh, an absolute love for that soundtrack. But just ahead of that, next up, we got Metroid Fusion, which again, I really enjoy. Up ahead of that is Metroid Prime Hunters, and ahead of that, at the top of B tier, is Metroid Prime 3 Corruption. And I think that might be my most controversial take of the day. 
I, don't, I, I think that's a good spot for it. I don't oh, know if okay. that's a crazy hot take. I'm okay with that. I don't know. I, I, I feel, I feel what like you said. I, I feel like there's a lot of I feel like there's a lot of people online that will want, want my head on a stake for not putting corruption in a S plus tier. But <laughs> well, I, you might be right, but <laughs> I won't be one of those people. But anyways, moving on to A tier, we got at the bottom of A tier, we got Metroid Zero Mission because I I think it's a really solid soundtrack. Um, I think it, it mostly just reincorporates a lot of themes from Super Metroid and the original, but I think they're all really solid themes. The only thing holding this back from S plus tier is those damn GBA speakers. Uh, you hate to see it. But overall, the actual compositions itself, I really like. Next up, I have Metroid Prime Hunters first time. Now we didn't we didn't really talk about this in the discussion. We mostly focused on Hunters, but I I really enjoy the music in this game. It's mostly it's mostly just covers of Metroid Prime of Metroid Prime themes. Mm-hmm. There's also a cover of the ending credits, or at least the first motif of the ending credits theme from the NES game. And then you have a couple of the uh, themes that would later appear in the multiplayer for Hunters, or at least early versions of those themes. Right. And I really think that the soundtrack just kicks ass in general. There's not a lot to it, because it's only a demo, but I really like the instrumentation, and especially the snare drum and uh, some of the screeches used throughout. I specifically love the Morph Ball training theme, which is a new arrangement of the Parasite Queen theme from Metroid Prime. And this is just straight up like a top 10 track for me. I love that new arrangement so much. Uh, yeah, not a lot of people talk about First Hunter, uh, First Hunt, but you know, I wanted to give a shout out because I think it deserves it. Going just ahead of that though, is going to be Metroid Samus Returns because it's a really good soundtrack. And then at the top of A tier, we got Super Metroid because Super Metroid it's a wonderful game from start Very to finish. Very good, yep. Including its music. And that brings us to S plus tier, the god tier. This is the these are the soundtracks that are blowing my mind. And it's actually the exact same as uh, as Andy. We got AM2R at the bottom, followed by Metroid Prime. The exact same, exact same arrangements and everything. Uh these two soundtracks are absolutely incredible absolutely love them you know i already talked a lot about metroid prime and you know all the philosophies regarding that and am2r about how mm-hmm. m- about all the work that milton guasti put in put into this and uh the love into the original themes as well as the new arrangements but that leaves us with only one game remaining the goat the greatest of all time there's only one game that i haven't mentioned and i think you know what is coming up and that is, of course, Metroid Prime 2 Echoes, which is my favorite, not just my favorite Metroid soundtrack of all time, probably one of my favorite soundtracks of all time in general. This, I'd say this is up there with like Super Mario Galaxy and uh, Doom Eternal. And uh, yeah, those, it's, it's like up there in like the top five of all times. And my favorite and my favorite track, my favorite all time Metroid track, which is in the soundtrack, is the ending credits theme that plays mm. at the very end of this game. I think it's so beautiful. You have these uh you have these robotic techno vocalizations combined with those choirs making making a another appearance again from Yumas's theme. Um and you have that combined with all of the motifs from the menu and they all come together to create this absolutely gorgeous piece of music and it gets me emotional every time I listen to it. But yeah. Those are my rankings. I, I love it, man. I think you had some really solid placements. And any kind of Metroid Prime love, whether it's 1, 2, or 3 right at the top, you know I'm a fan of that. So I, I think the, the Metroid Prime 2 soundtrack is, is awesome. I think all of the Metroid Prime soundtracks are awesome. And honestly, going back, listening to all these and going through them all, almost all the Metroid soundtracks are, are pretty damn awesome through and through. And it's one of the reasons we love these games. So... But yeah, yeah that was yeah. Go it's ahead. why we recorded yet another hour and a half <laughs> long episode on Omega Metroid. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, once you and I start talking about Metroid, it doesn't stop. It does not stop until eventually we actually do have to stop. Otherwise, we'd be here all night, as you said. I'm sure you could go all night just about Metroid Prime Two or even Metroid Prime alone. I mean, I mean, we still haven't covered Smash and Nintendo Land. There's oh. always room for more. <laughs> There's uh, that might we're gonna have to save for another episode. 
Um, but yeah, we've got some more Omega Metroid coming your way in the coming weeks. We're still going to be talking some more Metroid, some more Metroid Dread as the launch approaches. We are getting closer and closer to launch. We're getting closer and closer to being a month away, man. Can you believe it? Yeah, it's insane. Like, I think, yeah, in just under two weeks from now, it's going to be September 8th, and we are going to hit that coveted one month remaining mark. And after that, it's just all gears, all gears turning. Whew. I mean, heck, if anything, we're probably going to get a Nintendo Direct at that time, if we're being real, because there's, there's like almost always a Direct in September. And so I'm sure the Metroid Dread hype is just going to escalate even further. Yeah, man. I mean, I still saw like Metroid Dread still one of the top five or like one of the top pre-orders on like Amazon and like being bought on Amazon too. not even just on GameStop. Like the hype's still real. They're still they're they're tweeting about Metroid like almost every other day. It feels like on the Nintendo of America account, which is awesome. So excited for that. And I cannot wait to review not only the soundtrack for that game, but the whole game overall, man. Um, I'm very excited for it. Any last thoughts on Metroid music? Anything else before we sign off? Well, there's a there's a couple couple things. I think you can make the uh, the second announcement. Okay. But uh, yeah, so for our audience that are listening, I am going to post the tier list template that I made in the comments so that you can make your own tier list and you can tell us how wrong and dumb our opinions are, uh, so that you can be a true uh, a true internet persona like you were always meant to be. Uh, and then Dak. Uh, I think you should tell everyone the theme of our next episode. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, as we're talking some more Metroid, we want to get y'all back in on the conversation. So we are going to be opening up the floodgates, be opening things up again for a Q&A episode. So send us your questions. Join us on Discord. You can also send us your questions on Twitter, but... Join us on the Discord server. We have a channel just for submitting questions. We're going to take your questions leading up all throughout the week, leading up to our next episode, where we will answer your Metroid questions with some Metroid answers, and it'll be awesome. So I'm looking forward to it. I love Q&A episodes. I know Andy loves Q&A episodes, and he will be mad that he won't be here, but we'll do another one for him when he gets back. And uh, I'm, I hope you enjoy Q&A episodes because we'll be doing one. Yeah, it's funny. I've done a Q and A uh, with just Andy, and now I'm doing a Q and A with just you. One of these days, we yeah. need to get the three of us together to do like a group Q and A sesh or something like that. Yeah, I, w- I want to say the last time the three of us were together, at least one group, was when the Metroid Dread was originally revealed, and yeah. like I was in the car, like in between, like I was looking at this apartment. I think that I've now moved into. Uh, wild times. It's been. It feels like it's been a little while since Dread was revealed, but it really hasn't been. And the excitement continues to build. But yeah, we've got some more Omega Metroid planned for the coming weeks. Andy will be back soon and will be rejoining us on the show once he is done living his life out there. I'm sure he'll be ready to talk some more Metroid because he hasn't for a couple of weeks. But yeah, we're going to be doing a Q&A episode next week. It'll be absolutely awesome. Please send us your Metroid questions and we'll give you some Metroid answers. But so far, and that is it, we are going to, I think, wrap it up. Right about now, I think it's about that time, an hour and 33 minutes in. We've talked a lot of Metroid, and I think it's time to sign out of here and leave you to uh, get ready for next week's episode as we get closer and closer to the launch of Metroid Dread. Super hype. Thank you all for tuning in to this episode of Omega Metroid Podcast. Well, thank you again, my man Duminal, for joining in and having a great Metroid conversation. Of course, lending your musical expertise because... I certainly wouldn't have been able to carry us like you did on this episode. So very much appreciated, my guy. Yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure. I've always wanted to do a musical episode. And so I'm so happy that, uh, you know, uh, Andy gave me uh, permission to come on and uh, talk some music with y'all. Because, you know, this is, you know, outside of Metroid, my second biggest passion is easily music. And as I said at the int- at the uh, start of the episode, Metroid music is uh, not the- not the only reason, but a huge part of why I decided to pursue this degree in my ultimate career path as it is so you know absolutely love talking about it and thanks for having me on Dak. of course man anytime not just permission love to have you on the show and we'll continue to have you on the show in the coming future but for now that is it for us thank you so much for tuning in to the omega metroid podcast tell a friend in your life about it maybe even just tell them about metroid and tell them maybe to get their hands on metroid dread when it comes about either way Thank you all for tuning in, and we'll see you next time on the Omega Metroid Podcast. Thank you so much for listening, and have a good one.